Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part 12 of the Angels series. So let's take a look. We're going to be in the uh, book of 1 Kings. I think we're going to start in verse chapter 12 and verse 1. Yep, I think so. All right. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 1. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, for he was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt, that they sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, Now Rehoboam is um, the son of Solomon. You had King David, then you had King Solomon, now you got Rehoboam, who is Solomon's son. So there, the Israel came to Rehoboam, who is the king of Judah, and this is what they're saying. Thy father made our yoke grievous. In other words, these taxes are really high. Thy father make our, made our yoke grievous. Now therefore, make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke, which he put upon us lighter, and we will serve thee. And he said unto them, Depart yet for three days, then come again to me. And the people departed. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived, and said, how do ye advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and wilt serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. But he forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, and which stood before him. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that we may answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou say, I'm sorry, Thus shalt thou speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. And now, whereas my father did lay you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father all had chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. In other words, I'm going to make, you thought my father's taxes were heavy? Wait till I get done with you people. That's the Bob translation. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly and forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him and spake to him after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, and I will chastise you with scorpions. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was from the Lord. For the cause was from the Lord, that he might perform his saying, which the Lord spake by Ahijah the 
Shelonite unto Jeroboam the son of Nebat. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. Now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. Now remember, David was of Judah. There's 12 tribes, people. 12. Okay? Uh, and the demon nominational church world wants you to think that all of Israel is Judah. No, they're wrong. Of course, I don't know if they don't know that they're wrong because they went to Bible cemetery or if they're just plain out and out deceivers and they know better. I don't know. So, so they're... Uh, they're basically saying, oh yeah, you want to be our king? Well, forget about it. We're out of here. That's basically what they're saying. All right, so let's go to verse 17. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of uh, Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the tribute, he was basically the IRS agent. And all Israel stoned him with stones that he died. Oh boy, they killed the tax collector. They're like, get out of here, buddy. You ain't get nothing from us. You know, we've had it with, with you guys. Okay, so they stoned him with stones that he died. Therefore, King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. Yeah, so the king of Judah was like, I'm getting out of here. They just killed my tax collector, and if I don't get out of here, I'm going to be next. Verse 19. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. And it came to pass when all Israel heard that uh, Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house of David but the tribe of Judah only. Well, and there was some of uh, Benjamin was at Jerusalem and you had the Levite, tribe of Levi, the priests that were at Jerusalem also. So, Keep that in mind. And when Rehoboam came to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin and hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men, which were warriors to fight against the house of Israel to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But the word of God came unto Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and unto all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. They hearkened therefore to the word of the Lord and returned to depart according to the word of the Lord. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in Mount Ephraim and dwelt therein and went out from thence and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, All right, so, and Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David, if this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem. See, this Jeroboam didn't want everybody going down to Jerusalem to be doing sacrifices the three times a year that they were commanded of the Lord to. 
So what's he going to do? He's going to set up his own little sacrifice. God didn't tell him to do that. And it wasn't in God's plan. It wasn't what God wanted him to do. God allowed it, but it wasn't in his will. So this is along the lines where Israel started going downhill. So verse 27, If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam king of Judah. Wherefore the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Isn't this what uh, Aaron did, the golden calves? When Mo uh, Moses came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments and he broke them, broke the tablets of stone? Exactly the same thing. Golden calves. Is this going to make the Lord happy? No, absolutely not. And he set the one up in Bethel. Beth El, Beth means house. El is a contraction for the Lord. It basically means house of the Lord or the Lord's house. And the other put he in Dan. And this thing became a sin. Oh, no kidding, really? For the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. And he made a house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the uh, sons of Levi. And Jeroboam ordained, ordained a feast in the eighth month on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah, and he offered upon the altar. So did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made, and he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the eighth month, even the month which he had devised of his own heart, and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel, and he offered upon the altar and burnt incense. So... You wonder why in Jeremiah 3.8, why God divorced Israel? Here we go. All right. Let's go to verse chapter, chapter 13. 1 Kings chapter 13. Now, I can't figure this one out. Maybe somebody else has got a better understanding of this. And behold, there came... A man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Okay. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burnt incense unto thee. And men's bones shall be burnt unto thee. Now, Josiah was a, a good king of Judah, and he uh, destroyed some of the high places, and he actually defiled their, their uh, satanic holy places by burning the men's bones upon it. Verse 3. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam of Israel right, heard the saying of the man of God, which he cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him, and his hand which he put forth against him dried up so that he could not pull it in again to him. 
The altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me that my hand be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it was before. All right, so on 1 Kings chapter 13, let's read verse 6 again. Um, so his hand was uh, dried up, so he couldn't move his arm. Then the altar was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, just like, you know, the sign from the Lord. Um, and verse 6, And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it was before. Okay. So you'd think the king would have repented at this, right? No. Verse 7. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread nor drink water nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel, now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. And his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, Which way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his son, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon, and went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. And he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. Verse 18. Now listen to this. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. Which is true. He was. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. I don't understand the purpose of this. I guess the Lord was testing this guy to see if he was faithful. I don't know. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. And it came to pass, as he sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came into the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Forasmuch as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, thou hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but camest back and hast eaten bread and drunk water in the place of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread, and after he had drunk, that he settled for him the ass to it, for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way, and the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. And behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way, and the lion standing by the carcass, and they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. When the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Therefore the Lord hath delivered him 
unto the lion which hath torn him and slain him, according to the word of the Lord which he spake unto him. And he spake to his son, saying, Saddle me the ass, and they saddled him. And he went and found his carcass cast in the way in the ass, and the lion standing by the carcass. The lion had not eaten the carcass, nor torn the ass. And the prophet took up the carcass of the man of God, and laid it upon the ass, and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him. And he laid his, his carcass in his own grave, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. And it came to pass after he had buried him that he spoke to his son, saying, When I am dead, then bury me in the sepulcher wherein the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. Now remember, in the resurrection, I guess they'll both come up together at the same time. I'm not exactly sure what the meaning of this is, but there we go. Verse 32, For the saying which he cried by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel and against all the houses of the high places which are in the cities of Samaria shall surely come to pass. After this thing, Jeroboam returned not from his evil ways. After this thing, Jeroboam, remember he's king of Israel, returned not from his evil ways, but made again of the lowest of the people priests of the high places. Whosoever would, he consecrated them, and he became one of the priests of the high places. And this thing became sin unto the house of Jeroboam, even to cut it off and to destroy it from off the face of the earth. Uh, if anybody's got some thoughts on this, I'd be interested in hearing uh, other people's takes on this because I don't know. All righty, let's. Uh, that was chapters, First Kings chapters uh, thirteen, and um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, in His precious name. Amen.